Okay, so now we're gonna to get to the last little explainer here. So now we've set, talked about getting the sale um, or getting the sale order lines, the sale fulfillment and so on. Uh, we've also posted a sale in, um, and this little icon here tells you it's a draft order or it's ordering. Uh, we're now gonna talk about sending in uh, order lines, for example, and then picking and then packing. So again, just as a reminder, if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do. Uh, as a reminder, if you um, the, uh, you will obviously have these things server side, like say you're running a warehouse uh, or third party ordering system or whatever, you'll have the information your side, post it into there however you wish with whatever applications you wish. I'm just gonna show this by some reverse engineering just to keep things really simple because I don't have a database on my side. So that said, we'll now use the ID that we've um, set up so far. So I'm just going to make a note of this just quickly. Um, cool. And I'm going to go and do again some reverse engineering. So if I go in here and I'm going to look up that same existing sale that I've used in the previous videos. And I'm going to look up the same existing sale that I've used in the previous videos. Um, now, again, I could look up the whole 600 line call if I wanted, um, or here I'll just look up sale order because that's basically going to give me what I want to post back the other way. So this is the key information now, just noting that the status for this one is fulfilled because this has gone all the way through previously. Um, so what I want to do here is I'll then be posting a sale. So it's going to be slash sale slash order, same as it is here. Um, and I'll pop this information in here. Now there's some important notes here. So again, I don't want to use this sale ID. Um, I'll use the one that we've just created. Um, so I'll just replace this. So that's the one we've just created. Take the order number out. Not worried about a memo. Status I'm going to do authorized, I think is what it should be. Um, products again, so there is a product ID here. Um, that is important again, just like the customer ID is important. Uh, again, like customers, you don't have to have that ID um, and it will associate by SKU. So just like I said um, before that you don't need to send a customer ID and you can send the customer name, the same is the case for SKU. You cannot send in a SKU that does not exist in DIA because there's a bunch of other information that lives behind it like costs and stock levels and things like that. You can't just create a product on the fly. Obviously there is an API call to put a new product in if, if you wanted to. Uh, so here I'll just take the product IDs out just for reference sake. Um, you don't need to send in things like average costs uh, if you don't want to as well. Um, so I can take those out. Otherwise that should be most of what we need. Wait for this to error now. Um, so if I send this in, ooh, they look good. Um, so I get a response back. Um, and if I go into this sale here, live demonstrations, let's see how badly this has gone. No, perfect. Oh, okay, let's get, that's interesting. Okay, that one's actually back ordered because one of these products we won't have in stock. Um, that's just a little bit of an anomaly. Yeah, this one we've only got, we've got negative 21. That one's fine. Um, oh, that's a non-inventory product, that's why. Okay, cool. So um, I'm gonna hit a little bit of an issue in a moment that I won't be able to pick this stock because there's not gonna be enough stock on hand. That will actually give me a really good example. Uh, but just to show you, we've now got an authorized order. Uh, green means the section is authorized, orange is pending, gray is um, unavailable. Uh, and we've got everything set here with totals, with information. So those two calls, sale order and order lines, have given the dear customer, maybe your customer, um, the sale in the system, potentially with them ready to pick, pack, ship, manage as they need to. Now, if this API integration is to support um, like a third party system, like a warehouse system or, or similar, um, then you can be sending in picking and packing and shipping and similar as well. So again, I'm gonna reverse engineer. Um, so first I wanna go and get that existing um, uh, sale ID. Um, and this time I will get, now I can do this one of two ways. 
So like I mentioned before, I can get a fulfillment. This is for the existing sale. And I can see the pick, the pack, the ship, and so on. Or I can get sale fulfillment pick, which will just do the first little section. Um, this is difficult because this is kind of business business best practice is different for all of our clients, but very broadly, um, clients with smaller warehouses or quicker operations will tend to pick pack ship all in one. So they'll put an order in the system. Uh, that order will sit there waiting for someone to go out to the warehouse to get the product. And when they get the product in DIA, they will mark it pick pack shipped and put the um, shipping number into DIA. Maybe larger operations or more involved operations, especially with manufacturing, um, might do the pick stage first. So they have someone go out in the warehouse and grab the product, a market picked in DIA so that, that allocates it to that order. And then they might pack and ship later on, maybe even later that same day, next day and so on, uh, because they want that difference between the gathering of the product and it going out the door. Um, that's really a one by one on one thing. Um, it's difficult to advise kind of best practice because it's probably split down the middle who does what. Um, in this case, I'm just going to send the pick back in or I'm going to try to in this case, and it's likely to fail because of the back ordering. Um, so just to show you here, uh, actually, no, I'll do it through the API first. That makes more sense. So I'm going to grab this um, response here and I'm going to post it back in. Uh, so slash fulfillment slash pick. Um, so I've got all of that and I'll put the new ID in there. So this new ID, I want to authorize the pick and I want to ship the payload kegs and the VIP packaging. Give it a send. Perfect. Um, so got an error code, insufficient on hand quantity to complete shipment. And it actually tells you the SKU that's failed. Just to show you here in the front end of DIA, if I try and do the same, I get essentially in a slightly less technical prose, exactly the same error. Obviously the user error is a little bit more kind of polite and obvious to the user what needs to be done versus the more technical error in the API, but it's exactly the same problem. So if you get an API error along those lines, it is most likely a, um, not a user error, it's most likely a process error or something that needs to go back to the dear users as to why. So to take this example, if you're say, if you're posting into DIA to say, we've shipped those kegs out, DIA is saying, you don't have stock to ship them out. That needs to be addressed with somebody. Um, the only exception to that is obviously if you get any error where it's um, like DIA non-responsive or similar, um, DIA has got the usual 99.99% uptime guarantee. So if that's the case, usually a retry is the best thing, but just note that. So if you get errors along these lines, you're best to check um, with uh, either the client or ourselves if we're involved in this. Other examples I've mentioned before will be like packing before you pick, um, packing different products to what you've picked, um, shipping through a courier that doesn't exist in DIA, th those kinds of things. It's very difficult for me to kind of list and, and imply what any of all those things are because it's all different based on people's workflows. Um, but hopefully that starts to make sense there. So in order to complete that sale out, you would then pick, then pack, then ship, and, and just run through the stages there. Um, a good thing to do, and we can do this with the clients we're engaged with, is to get either from us or your dear client to get um, a run through of what they do in the front end of the system, because all you're doing in the API is mirroring that. So that will start to give you the understanding of what the stages are and similar. Um, as an indication, um, if, for example, they are doing assemblies, so making a product up from other products. Um, there's some steps involved in that. You have the assembly order, which is where you take the raw materials out of stock. And then you have the pick, which allocates them, and you complete, which finishes the order. So there's set stages for particular things. Same for a stock transfer. There's the order where it leaves the uh, warehouse. And then there's a complete when it arrives at the destination warehouse. Um, these are all documented in the API, but it's always worth a front end explainer of what the steps and stages are. Um, hopefully that part will make sense. Uh, 
that's probably the last video I'll go through in this in terms of process. We could do a video for every single API call, but the logic is the most important side. Probably going any more than this kind of 80% explainer is going to be bespoke for every single client. So feel free to, to engage us, get in touch if you needed more information or similar. Hopefully that's useful though.